Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy God, give us humble and teachable spirits, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may gladly receive what you have revealed to us and do that which you command. Amen. Mother lot in life. And the other thing was just a, the, the, the bird feeder that was. 
birds outside our kitchen window, particularly the chickadees I would observe, because they would, I was so intrigued, the way they did it, they would fly to the, the, the feeder, they would get one sunflower seed, fly off to a branch or something to eat it, and then back and forth, and they just seemed to do that all day long. And, and uh, so uh, why I want to point this out is that Jesus isn't saying in this section, you know, don't work, be a slacker, you know. <laughs> He's not saying that birds don't work for a living. Jesus is talking about worry, anxiety, and fretting. So he's using the, the, the images around him, the things you see. He says, learn from the things you see, the way that your Heavenly Father provides for you. You know, they're not planting seeds and putting away in barns, and yet they're, they're provided for. And I, I feel that, that this wonderful reading that we have today, often there's parts of it where we want to say, yes, but. And, and I think one of the first yes, buts is, is exactly this. Well, yeah, but you have, you know, people have to work. We, yeah, I think you just would agree with, the, with, the, with that. Is that. He's not saying that it's not that we don't work, but you don't need to worry because the loving provision is there. And, and another yes but that I sometimes hear from this, what is Jesus saying that planning and foresight is a bad thing? I mean, isn't it a good idea to put things in bars against the day when the harvest doesn't come? Yes, Jesus is not arguing against, uh, you know, retirement plans, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is not making, over and over he uses that word, worry. It's the same Greek word that keeps on appearing through this, but don't worry. Don't use up your spiritual and physical energy running on these things. Really trust in the provision of God. And then I hear another yes, God, that comes up. And say, well, think of all the people who aren't being provided for in this world. There are many, as we know, millions and millions of people all over the world who don't have enough to eat and don't have shelter and don't have clothing. What do you mean trusting God's providence? Well, again, I'm not going to preach that sermon, but I think we all understand that we and the rest of our human family are part of God's plan of providence and that we are the plan for getting those people things that they need in order to help them survive. Just as most of us here, at some point in our lives, have been helped by someone who helped to get us through. That's part of God's providential plan, too. No. Jesus is saying, don't worry, don't fret about how these things don't, don't I mean, and if I need to say, and don't waste your time on it, you know. He says, a lot of this is just good human wisdom. What will worry get you? Does worry or fretting ever improve the situation, solve the problem? We know what worry gives us. Uh, for those of you who worry, uh, let me see. for those of us who worry, <laughs>
kind of one of those practical sermons. Uh, a real prescription that's given to us in the New Testament about how to stop worrying. And Jesus, right in this reading, gives us the point number one, and what Jesus says is, is really the first and most important thing to do. And he says, first things first. And for Jesus, he says, as I said, it would keep the eye on the ball. God's kingdom and its righteousness. That's the most important thing. Strive and work for those things. And the other things you need, you'll find provided too. He, he says, if you really have first in your heart God and love of neighbor and the goodness of the kingdom and stay focused on that, do you know it will actually push out some of those other worries? To keep the first thing first. Don't let yourself become distracted and pulled apart by the concerns for the world. Not an easy thing to do, but that's the first number one. This is going to be a free part. So number one, first things first, and the first thing is God. And then I actually go to another place in the New Testament for two and three that are really tied together. Let's see, I have it's from the letter uh, to the Philippians. But a similar said, the thing is said in a number of places in the, in the New Testament. But I love this verse from uh, Philippians chapter 4. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So numbers 2 and 3 are kind of connected. Instead of worrying and fretting, let your requests and needs be made known to God. Know, know that number one, the number one, is really there for you. And, and, and when you start feeling that anxiety and the fretting, just open that up to God and inside yourself like this. Remind yourself that God is right there for you. And just in a very simple, but to the same way as the child to the parent, let's know your needs. Just let God know. And we know that God already knows it. Doesn't matter. God loves us and wants to hear from us. Let your needs be known. What thinks that? In the midst of the problem, and and I don't want to in any way minimize. Now, and this is not a you know, and just have a happy face kind of sermon. I don't want to minimize the kinds of problems, pain, and struggles that you have in your life. But even in the midst of all of that, there is goodness in your life. And when you stop just for a moment to remember the goodness. And to give thanks for it in the midst of asking for your needs. Again, it's so hard to worry and be thankful at the same time. It kind of pushes out, you know, <laughs> the worry <clears throat> when the genuine gratitude is there. I remember one of those moments for me that I go back to sometimes. Do any of you remember Hale Bach? It was a comment back in, oh, I don't know, it was sometime in the 90s, that Hale Bob, and I remember, I, got, I didn't get as excited about Hale Bob because there had been, before that, comment for Kutek, and there was all a lot of hype, a lot of hype around Kutek and how this was just going to be an amazing thing. And I don't have to remember, it, you know, from our side, I'm not saying that it wasn't amazing, but from those of us viewing it, it was like, you know, <laughs> this is supposed to be spectacular. I don't know if there's any real difference in the nice stuff. Hale Bob was not like that. I still can see Hale Bob hanging in that sky for week after week. And I can tell you one night, I was driving home. And every once in a while, we really feel 
what's, what's happening, don't we? We let ourselves be open to the wondering and the beauty of all. And I could not believe that I had been allowed to be alive to see that. And I remember thinking, Lord, you can take me now. I can't believe that I've been allowed to witness this. It's so glorious. So one of the things, when things get really bad and I'm fretting and I don't, I'm not feeling any good in my life right then, I can remember things like that. And let them bless me again, as they did this time. But often you don't have to go that far. Often it's done in exercise but even in the midst of the horrible stuff that is happening to us, there's the amazing, gracious gift of a prayer. There's the beauty that surrounds us that gets through that. And if we let our heart open to that and give thanks to that, again, it helps us. That's the third practice for helping to combat worry and fretting. So we're going to go over them again to see how good you were listening. <laughs> there were three, three practices that help us to actually worry less. The first is working to keep God at the center. God and God's kingdom and forgiveness and kindness and justice and peace. Making that first in our lives. Making our needs known to God in prayer. Giving thanks for the amazing moments of grace and beauty in our lives. And when I can remember to do that, it helps. <laughs> I know it's tough when you're in the midst of a really tough situation and you've been praying for a long time because I'm worried, like many of you out here. But we can work at it. We can try to remember. We can try to practice those three things. And let God do God's good work.
join in the litany of thanksgiving which you find in your bulletin. For the beauty and wonder of our world, we give you thanks and praise. For all that is gracious in our lives, we give you thanks and praise. For our daily food, clothing, and shelter, we give you thanks and praise. For our families, friends, and pets, we give you thanks and praise. For the strength and skill to work and for leisure time to play and rest, we give you thanks and praise. For all who are courageous, patient in suffering, and faithful in adversity, we give you thanks and praise. For those who pursue peace, justice, and truth, we give you thanks and praise. For all the saints whose lives have witnessed to your life, we give you thanks and praise. For the gift of your Son, and for the promise of eternal life with you, we give you thanks and praise. And it's time for our sharing of joys.